Welcome to Language Help. Let's study another cue card. We'll teach you our four box method of answering any cue card. We'll discuss vocabulary and we'll share our answer with you. If you want, you can directly jump to the full answer from the timestamps in the description box. Subscribe, ring the bell, and let's do this. In the second task in the IELTS speaking test, you'll be given a piece of paper with a question written on it. This is what's called a cue card. You'll also be given an empty paper, a pencil, and only one minute to structure and organize your answer. After the minute is over, you're supposed to speak on the topic for two minutes, and then you'll answer one or two follow-up questions. Not all questions will be familiar to you, and you're not expected to tell the truth, so use your imagination. Today's cue card question is to describe one of your family members with whom you spend the most time. To answer this question, think of family vocabulary. Grandparents, grandchildren, parents, brothers, sisters, siblings, uncles, aunts, and cousins. Also try to think of relationships and feelings. Love, hate, like, dislike, admiration, and so on. Let's discuss the cues and see what we can do. The first cue is who he or she is. On your paper, draw a box and note down the tense you'll be using to accomplish this specific task. If you cannot decide on the tense, you can always rely on the tense of the cue. In this case, the cue tense is a simple present tense. Like we said earlier, think of family and relationship vocabulary. For our answer, the family member will be an aunt who is a middle child in her family. I write these down so I won't forget them. The second cue wants us to answer, what do you usually do together? The first step, as always, is to establish the tense. In this case, I'll be using the present tense. Think of places you go to or activities you do, shopping, for example. The third cue asks us to talk about what kind of person he or she is. Here, we're going to have to describe the person. So we'll need the present tense. But I'm also thinking of talking about an example that happened in the past to further the description. So I'll use the past tenses too. I need vocabulary like sociable, kind-hearted, and the example. The fourth and final cue is to explain why you spend most of your time with them. This is about usual habits or routine, so the present tense. But if you want to talk about an example, you're going to have to use the past too. So I'll just throw this in there. Here we'll talk about feelings and expectations. So that was our analysis. If you're following with us, your paper should look something like this. Now the boxes are ready for you to start speaking, but remember to keep eye contact with your examiner. Also, remember to use unfamiliar vocabulary, a few collocations and idioms, and a mix of tenses if you can. Before we start with the answer, remember to subscribe and ring the bell. And if you want to try on your own, now is a good time to pause the video. Now here's our example answer. The first cue is who she or he is. Our answer is, the person I'm closest to in my family is definitely my Aunt Selma. She's the middle child of three girls. Aunt Selma and my mom are incredibly close. They even take after each other. Closest is the superlative form of the adjective close. It means emotionally attached. To take after is a phrasal verb. It means to resemble or to look alike. The second cue is, what do you usually do together? Our answer is, we have always got on and we never fell out. I know that is unusual, but she is so outgoing and sociable. Everybody who sees her falls for her. Her friends especially value her care and kindness. I remember them praising her efforts at university to mend fences between her two best friends. To get on is the British way to say get along. The meaning is to have a harmonious or friendly relationship. To fall out is to have an argument. To fall for someone is to like or love them. To praise is to express warm approval or admiration of someone. To mend fences is an idiom that means making peace with a person. The third cue is what kind of person he or she is. Our answer is my aunt and I always hang out together and go shopping in her free time, which is not as often as you would think. Last week, for instance, we were in the mall shopping for new boots for grandpa, but we ended up buying three pairs of shoes because we have the same taste in fashion. To hang out is to spend time with someone. As often as you think is an expression that means as expected. For instance, is another way to say, for example, to end up is to result in something. To have a taste in something is to have preference or liking. The fourth and final cue is to explain why you spend most of your time with them. Our answer is, I think we hang out because I admire my aunt. I look up to her because she is responsible. My grandpa had a heart attack once, and had it not been for her quick decisive action, we could have lost him. I also value her honesty. I too would like to think of myself as honest. We both hate lying. 
To admire is to regard with respect or warm approval. To look up to someone is another way to say admire or aspire to be like that someone. When an action is decisive, it produces a definite or final result. Had it not been for someone to do something is an inverted third conditional structure. This is an advanced form you can use in your speech. It helps you show variety in grammatical structures. The simpler way to say this is to say if it had not been for someone to do something and finish the sentence. So there you have it. What was your answer like? Share it with us in the comments and we'll help you with it. You can now subscribe and see one of these two lessons to learn more about cue cards.